got Hello? your clicker? Yep. All right, thanks for having us, Roger. Appreciate the invitation. Good. As you stated, we're new product consulting. We're a consulting and design development firm in Boulder. We work with a lot of early stage people, people at all levels, but a lot mm -hmm. of early stage is the bulk of our business. I'm the managing partner and founder, and I connected with Sam about three years ago, and he's been heading up our consulting and development division. Mm -hmm. Basically founded the company as a originally a product consulting business based out of my home office about eight years ago. I uh, met Stephen Key at a trade show in 2006 and uh, really liked his approach to things, started studying a lot of his work, reading his books, and, and prior to that I worked with a consulting firm as well where I consulted a lot with inventors and uh, attended trade shows and that nature, more of a licensing style of a company. And uh, after a few years of doing consulting, I, I read about the small business community in Boulder, and moved up from Arizona to Boulder, and just started developing a network of, of professionals that can, can help with different services in our industry. Initially, my core focus was consulting, so I started connecting with people in the area that did patents and design and development and things like that. And we uh, expanded the firm from there uh, into more research, design, development, working pretty much with everybody from product developers to inventors and entrepreneurs, helping with anything from initial research, uh, developing mini business plans with people, um, just really a lot of guidance in the overall process. and trying to help them figure out what step to take and what area and things of that nature. Um, I read recently after that about the collaboration business model where a lot of independent companies work together instead of one firm having a bunch of departments in-house uh, specializing and focusing on kind of a core and then working together with individuals on the outside for that and that was where we met Mike design up in Boulder and we use him and refer him a lot of business for engineering needs and, and clients that need uh, help with everything from development to in some cases manufacturing and sourcing and uh, we really since we moved up here about three years ago and opened our office in downtown Boulder we've just been meeting a lot of people from the industry and and really just expanding a network so when people come to us, we've got the ability to hopefully either help them or guide them with somebody who would be a good, honest, ethical person that could help them. So that's kind of a little bit of a, a small history. Our core focus in our everyday is really based around just helping people evaluate ideas through market and patent research, look for competition, figure out uh, who needs or, or who's out there, what ideas might be, be better to pursue, is it worth pursuing, is it, is it something where there's too much competition and saturation in the market, uh, overall process consultation, you know, what, what do you do in what order, you know, when is it time to prototype, when is it time to try to license, Sam here does a lot of design consultation with people who have early fuzzy concepts and, and need to really pull those together and, and think a little bit about, uh, you know, how could it be made, what materials could be used for construction, a lot of the earlier stage uh, development before things might need to get to engineering and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, we work closely with a lot of graphic designers, a lot of industrial designers, engineers, people that can help develop concepts uh, through 3D models and renders and animations, uh, cell sheets, websites. Uh, we work with a studio in Hollywood that does product video demos. They hire amateur, uh, amateur actors to shoot videos when, when the product needs to be demonstrated. A lot of it is helping people figure out, do I want to manufacture and build a business, or should I maybe try 
got a license first. Um, and then uh, a lot of also marketing and, and licensing consulting. We get a lot of people that don't have the budget to start their own business, so they might be looking to take it to a company that can help them develop and sell the idea. In the market. Mm -hmm. so we attend a lot of trade shows to connect companies looking for ideas and really consult and guide the client in either the process of submitting the idea to retail stores or the process of submitting the idea to companies that look for ideas for license. Uh, we've got a pretty extensive database of companies that we've connected with over the last three years, about 1,500 companies that are always on the lookout for new ideas. So we can help you uh, try to target companies that might be a good fit if you do want to go the licensing route and if you are already producing and manufacturing and ready for retail stores we've helped some people submit to Walmart, Walgreens, places like that, try to get it get a little bit bigger into some of the big box stores. And then also the other side of the business is working together with people that want to start their own business and once again helping with what steps to take and what order. Just our recent business that we helped a lady found is a, a therapy business up in Loveland. So we helped her set the business up, get her website made, everything like that. And uh, yeah, we both really enjoy the industry and these are a few of our, our current focuses. And then uh, I think at this point, this is where we want to talk to you, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, my name is Sam once again, so I do a lot of the uh, kind of design evaluation, brainstorming. back.
So yeah, just the overview then. So that's that's kind of the initial consultation. If you're just starting with, you've got ideas in your head and you're not really sure what it's even going to look like or how it's going to work. Those are the kind of things that we want to look at: is what's been done before, what's you, what's really the the uh, the key thing that's going to make consumers' lives easier, or users' lives easier, and build on that and start kind of putting ourselves in the shoes of the user of the product and looking at. Uh, some possible avenues as to how that's going to take shape. Usually after I've talked to a client about this and we've done some research and looked at what's out there, uh, some visuals start to come to mind and then we'll do some ideation sketching. So that's kind of a fancy term for napkin sketching or just getting ideas down on paper. Um, and you'll see some examples as I go forward in the presentation of some work that we've done and you can see kind of this process. Uh, and then Everything gets approved by the client as we go along. Um, so it starts to take shape in the sketching phase, and then we'll do a more refined design concept using 3D renders or models. Um, and this is where our kind of network of designers gets involved, because more in the consultation and initial idea, um, kind of nailing down the initial idea for it and concept, and then I guide the process through with our sort of network of collaborators. So. We have 3D renders and models done. That's when you get to see your idea kind of in the round. And then we can do animations to go into further detail with that and see the product in life and if there's moving parts to it or cabinets that need to be opened and see what's inside, that kind of thing. Animations really help with that. And then the product video demos is like Brian um, was saying, we have a studio in Hollywood that can do more like a commercial for your product, so live action. If you have a prototype, um, and a more refined concept, or you're at the stage where you're trying to get business going, maybe you have a Kickstarter project you want to do, et cetera, uh, we can do that as well. And then sell sheet design is another sort of standard thing, so really getting your idea across quickly, uh, punching out the features and benefits, and using all that work that we've done previously to put it together into a quick presentation. And then we can do website design as well for a kind of a pitch platform uh, to help with licensees who are reviewing your ideas, see what it's all about. Uh, or if you're trying to get sales for e-commerce, you have a new product you're bringing onto the market, you know, we can get you set up through there. Uh, so here is an example of a project that uh, we've worked on. Uh, the inventor, Ryan Bach here, he uh, works in a pretty demanding industry and it, he needed a very specific tool uh, where there's a good amount of competition on the market for it. It's a type of sensor. and uh, so this was a situation where there was a really well-defined kind of problem solution and uh, it took a lot of research and looking at what's working on the market, where are competitors at, what are some features that maybe are in a different industry that we can combine here uh, and making the best use of new technology. Um, so that's where the wristband comes into play and using some of the sensors and things that uh, products like Fitbit and those sort of trends can can go into another product line, in this case, this personal safety sensor that's been around for a long time. So part of what we do is look at what are some trends in technology, where are new avenues emerging to where things can be done that couldn't be done before or can be done cheaper or easier now than could be done before because of uh, you know things just getting more affordable or smaller or easier to implement, et cetera, like with uh, advent of smartphones, a lot of the smaller power supplies, displays, and functionality is available to products that weren't there before, so it's a pretty exciting time. Um, so we'll do a sketch like this. This is sort of a second uh, developed sketch of the idea with call-outs, labeling out uh, all of the different features, and then this is after a couple of hours of consultation with the client and several hours of research and, and drawing. You know, we came up with the uh, this concept sketch. So this is just something that's in progress right now, but to, to show you a little bit of that kind of part of the process and where that can come from. And here's a different example of a guy who came to us with less specific information. So if we have a client who's just wanting to get an idea out there, doesn't really have any idea of the form of it, but uh, has kind of a unique concept. His thing was you've got line trimmers and you've got a lawnmower and they're in separate places, and you have to go back and get your line trimmer if you want to go around your uh, fence posts and your hedges and things like that. 
uh, why not put them together? But he didn't really have much idea at the time of how those things were going to be combined. So this was one of our designers, Justin, put together this initial step sketch for him, uh, where that could be combined. And we came up with the idea of it being connected with this um, kind of pigtail cord that can stretch, and you can get off of the mower and you and it docks right in place and also helps with touching the grass as you go. So he came with the kind of the initial um, problem solution and then we will add in detail and brainstorm things and bring it back to the client and kind of collaborate in that way. Uh, that way we're putting our heads together and our experience and ideas and then you as the inventor get the say so of what goes in or what's included or not. But, you know, rather than um, a cut and dry thing where you're kind of just relying on knowing everything up front and the pressure of having to have all your ducks in a row from the beginning, you know, it's more of a creative process that we like to do where we can, and that's where the new product consulting part comes in a bit. Uh, and then here's kind of a third example of an idea, and this was a lot more of like an experience-driven product, so just an example of another way that people go about coming up with their ideas and how things come forward. Uh, this was really more about this idea of when you wake up in the morning um, and you have to get that shower in, what if you had this experience where your alarm goes off at your usual time and all you have to do is just go in the bathroom and your shower is there at the temperature you like it, it's already running, um, it wakes you up and you get your daily forecasts, maybe a little news blurb in there, uh, and it's customized to you in a way that's affordable to install and and easy and intuitive to use. So coming from that point of, okay, well, what would that be like and what product can we design in order to meet that need? Um, so we, we came up with this concept here for something that could be installed in line in the shower uh, using a digitally connected gate valve that just uh, installs onto your existing shower head uh, and a suction cupped in display there that comes with an app and you just set it up and it works um, after day one, and there's no demo, you don't need to tear out the tile in your shower stall in order to get this in. So that's another way to go about it, right? It's, most of the time, people don't come up with a miracle uh, new material in an MIT lab and then figure out what are all the applications of this. It's more of the problem-solution kind of mindset of uh, here's a problem or here's a, how great could this be, and we try to bring a practical uh, idea to the table that can then be used to build off of the project. Um, so then here's the next step is showing this in renders. The uh, client was really happy with everything with the sketches and where we started with. So here's an example for you of kind of the, the style of the renders we do. Unfortunately, I don't think the full color is here, but if you look at it on the, the link in your email, you'll be able to see the renders kind of in their full detail. Uh, so just taking that, bringing it more to life, and this is usually when clients start getting very excited because you can really see your invention in the round and in color. Um, and then we can also kind of make further tweaks and edits to finish and texture and some shapes and just further refine the idea at this point uh, and get those details in. And really, this is a 3D model, so we can get all sorts of shots and different angles and see the various parts. Um, so that you get a good idea of how the product fits together and what the various pieces are and all that. So, yeah, exactly. So you've got you've got now this virtual prototype basically, and then this this uh, design can be loaded into a CAD program and. Uh, you have a starting point for doing your prototyping from here. So, um, and there's another render example here of the grass slasher, which is the mower trimmer line combo. Um, and our kind of target market for this in consideration with development was we knew the client wanted to go for licensing. So that's where you see the, the John Deere branding on the side there. Um, we always try to kind of design with the end goal in mind. So if you're starting a business with it or you're trying to license with it, um, you know, if you're not quite sure yet, we'll try to look at the long view before we get this far ahead so that we can design towards your needs. You know, if you're intending to make this yourself, we'll try to design in a way that's going to be economical for you. Uh, or if you're going for a really specific type of brand or product uh, place in the store, 
you know, we'll try to design towards that goal so that you're not kind of moving forward without really having an end destination in mind. And that can really help save a lot in terms of cost of development or back and forth or, you know, you don't want to get too far and realize your idea is not going to be feasible or too expensive with the way you've done it. So we always try to work with those things in mind where we can as well. Um, and here you'll see an example of animation. Just do a space bar. Or, there you go. So here's an example of the, the product animation. Uh, it just gets an opportunity to show the product in the round and how the pieces move and slot together and bring that, uh, that render to life a little bit more. So this would be presented on the web page um, and show kind of the key details. So this is generally presented alongside some text or sales copy with your idea or along with the presentation that we submit uh, to put it into context, but gives the potential licensee or buyer an opportunity to, to get a better idea of the construction and use of the product. Picture's worth a thousand words, uh, video's worth 10,000 or so, I'd say, so. And then uh, here's an example of a product video demo. So this is our, our product demo, oh, our video team, uh, product that they did, uh, the LifeRight, which is sort of a personal safety security pen here. I think I got it with the remote here. Um, so you can just see an example. So if you're at the prototype stage, you have product already developed, maybe you have some graphic design or branding done, um, you know, and they can deal with a variety of details. So if you, if you need a script or if you already have one, um, you know, they can use the graphics you already have or come up with things depending on your budget. Uh, and they'll actually cast for people to, to act out scenes and things. So they'll work out kind of a storyboard of, of what they want to shoot with you and and then put together a video. So as long as you've got some kind of product you can send and, and have them shoot, I can put something together for you. So. crowdfunding and just investor pitches and things like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see, where are we at here? Um, and then kind of getting towards the marketing phase at this point, generally you would have your, your patent work already filed and we'd work with a patent agent uh, or if you have your own patent agent already, that's totally fine. We just refer out for that. Um, then we would get into uh, getting ready for marketing. So a lot of our clients go the licensing route. It's a great route if you're not quite there with the capital that you need to go into manufacturing yourself or start a business and you want to kind of road test your product or um, get a deal out there without making that initial investment. What we would do in that case is put together a sell sheet. Um, and the big thing there is, is we want a really quick uh, presentation of your product what the features and benefits are, kind of tell us what this is going to do and, and why people want it in a short presentation. And then we can follow up afterward with uh, more kind of a history of the project, the design process and research or technical specs, things like that. But initially, what most uh, companies out there who are doing licensing are looking for that we've talked to, they want a one or two page sheet with good, clear images, a really clear example of what the product is and the features for it and uh, an idea of how this might fit in with their business. So that's either done with a cover letter or specifically kind of built into the way that the product is presented that also aligns with the, the goals or the mission of the company. So maybe if they're the economical item uh, option for a certain product category, and this is uh, the smart shower is an economical smart application for the shower, you know, that's, that's good targeted marketing there. If we can find companies that are going for that angle and they're going to read that in your sell sheet and, and understand why that's a fit for them or, or we'll kind of craft a pitch for that. But, uh, you know, in general, we'll put together a product name, unless you already have one for it, something that typically kind of says what the product does on the box but uh, is easy to remember and isn't a direct copy of something else out there because we don't want to run into issues with that. Uh, at this point, you don't necessarily have to bank on that branding if the licensee is interested in it and they want to do their own branding with it. 
uh, they may decide to do that, but if you want to kind of bank on the product name and build a brand around it, we have options for that as well. So we can do logo design and uh, refer you for trademarking and build your all of your materials and your design stuff around that brand identity. And then your tagline would be on there, and that's if you're going to read one thing on a sell sheet, that tagline should tell you what it is. You know, so you you want to kind of design it, looking at if somebody's just putting this at a glance and doing an initial review of the dozens of products they may see in that day, what do you want to jump out at them? And that's your tagline should be kind of telling them uh, what your product is. And then getting into the, the problem, uh, problem solution sort of model is what we usually go for in terms of the introduction. That's typically the language that's used in terms of marketing and product management and development is when you look at uh, an advertisement or you um, listen to a pitch about a product, typically the, you know, the first thing somebody's going to do is get you to empathize with a problem first and then provide you with a solution, right? Sell me a pen, take the guy's pen, and then try to sell it to him, if you've seen Wolf of Wall Street, right? So you want to introduce that idea of the need for the product and the solution in one in that introduction, and then we go into the features and benefits. Once again, it's a quick introduction to what's great about your product, what, you know, what really inspired you to create it, and how has it developed uh, through that process that's going to be something unique and uh, something that sticks out to you. If it's on the shelf, what are, or you're recommending it to somebody and you're envisioning this product being fully built, uh, what are those things that you're first going to go to in terms of a recommendation or a feature that you really love about it? And then the other thing is just uh, showing clear images and details of those things, parroting what you're saying in your features and benefits, making it clear to the, the viewer what, um, what you're doing with the product. And then what are you looking for? You know, a good marketing uh, gives your intended audience a way to engage with you at the end of the message. So in this case, we're looking for licensing, and, uh, development, uh, investment, that kind of thing, and contact info. And we, we manage, uh, for most of these projects, we manage all the, the contacts and correspondence for you, so you don't have to worry about if that unknown phone number calling you is, uh, you know, that you may have missed a call from a potential licensee or an email gone unread, et cetera. Um, you know, we do the submission and correspondence and follow-up, and it's often, if it's coming from a company, uh, sometimes that can help you a little bit in terms of uh, if you're trying to go through a gatekeeper or get to the right person in a company, just having a professional-looking email or a logo, even if you're just doing this on your own, I recommend setting up a custom email address for your product. Um, so that can help you if you're looking for information or trying to get to the right department in a company. Uh, and, you know, we also just have the experience of knowing sort of what to ask for, who to talk to, what information to present or to keep private at the time, and how to kind of verify your lead, so to speak, in a potential licensee. Um, yeah, and then we get into our referral partners, which I'll pass back to Brian here. But we have... With any product, right, it kind of takes a village to raise a child, same deal with a product. It takes a lot of different uh, skill sets and experience levels to get a product to, to market. And you've got people on the marketing side, on the engineering side, on the design side, on the business side, uh, and it takes a passionate inventor and person with some resilience at the core of all that, uh, pushing the idea forward. And we don't pretend to be experts in everything, but we, we do like to do is... Uh, uh, you know, see the best potential in a product and work towards a, a workable solution for all of our clients and then uh, help smooth along that transition between those different phases or bring you to the right people that you may need uh, to get you to wherever it is that you're trying to go. Um, so, yeah. Just wrapping up, uh, some of the, the local partners we've connected with that we refer business to for things that aren't necessarily our core focus China to West, we met at a trade show last year, the National Hardware Show, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll be attending that again this year. And they've got boots on the ground in China. They've got a lot of connections with the plants over there. They can, uh, the gentleman who runs the, the company has been in the business for quite a while. So it's nice to have somebody in China when you're trying to do that thing versus trying to do it from, from over here where 
don't have a whole lot of control over what's happening. Uh, we've connected also with a social media management, an Amazon expert who uh, does a lot of setting people up on Amazon, helping them increase sales, things of that nature. Um, social media management, building a buzz out there. If you want to run a crowdfunding campaign, he can help you run Facebook. We have had two clients work with China 2 West so far. Uh, both are in the early stages. We, we just started that referral agreement with them recently. So only two so far, but neither one of them have had produced yet. And then uh, social media management, if you, if you need help with crowdfunding campaigns, we're just building the buzz about your own product. They can help post things on Twitter and Facebook and Crowdfunding, which which is kind of hit or miss depending on the product. From what I hear from the crowdfunding experts, some products are good for crowdfunding, some aren't. Uh, but definitely a, an avenue to look into. Uh, if you do already have product made and you want some search engine optimization or pay-per-click marketing, then we connect you with them with PPC and with all of our advertising for us, and they do a real good job for our company. And then for basic prototyping, we with Applied Design, which is based out of Boulder, and we refer people to them, and, and they have a pretty good program where they'll sit down with you and try to help you figure out the best way to make things. So those are the primary referral partners, and then our marketing and licensing consulting services are, are primarily every day dealing with these kinds of things with people, helping them identify trade shows that they might want to attend, uh, researching and identifying who are going to be the best fit for the product, um, you know, who are already making similar products in their lines that, that might be able to take a look at it and see if they might be interested, uh, helping people contact those companies, figuring out who the key decision makers are and what the licensing process looks like with each company, uh, showing people how to submit or at least advising them on how to submit their product safely to these companies. We see a good level of interest uh, on probably about 20% of the products that we see people submit to companies. So when they do come back with interest, then we're helping them gauge that interest and, uh, and gauge that interest and uh, you know answer questions. A lot of times the sell sheet is the starting point, and then the company wants to know more from there. So we can step in on phone calls and do do conference calls with companies if that's what needs to be done, um, and then also assist with any offers. Uh, we just had a had one go through recently where we worked on it for about a year and a half and went back and forth with the licensee multiple times, negotiations, and then eventually when the contract comes around, then we let the attorneys get, get involved and make sure the contracts look right. And then, as I said, we attend a lot of trade shows ourselves just to continue to build our network, uh, follow where the industry's going. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of shows, like the National Hardware Show, will have a specific section for inventors. And so that's usually pretty good for information and, and just connecting with new people. And uh, that's the basics of what we have. We'll just do questions and answers from here, Roger. Is that the best thing to do? We've done both. We've done some, some flat fee services. That's the bulk of what we do. But we also, in some cases, do contingency arrangements with people. If you've got a sales history behind your product and you want to license it, then we've taken on things with, with just contingency based our side if we can get you a deal. So we, can, we can shop it around a little bit for you and, and see if there's some interest, test the market, and, and then if we do get an offer, we can help chop up the proceeds. Do you do uh, <clears throat> mostly high tech or low tech? I would say mostly low to mid, mostly low to mid tech. Um, 
If something's super high tech, that's when we usually try to get the IT person involved. Yeah. 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 No, we've got two pending, but the lifetime of products are usually not that that long. So we've had a couple of things that have sold in the past for a year here, a year there. Uh, we had one that got licensed out. The licensee took it to their buyers at Walmart, but they, they turned it down. So unfortunately, that didn't make it in. But we've got a couple that are in review right now. It, it can take sometimes a few months for them to get through the review process. But yeah, we're, we're, we're about three years old in terms of our, our, uh, our local and, and a lot of our retail services have, have been recently added. No, we have everything structured as a work for hire agreement. And so once you've paid us, then what we've done is yours. Yeah, we, we get that question a lot, and as with any industry or service, you have to do your due diligence, you know, you have to research whoever you're thinking about dealing with, I mean, with us locally, we can come right to our office and consult with us right there, so it's uh, going to be tough to scam you if you're sitting right in front of us and hearing us out, but yeah, a lot of the invention promotion stuff out there, I mean, most of those big companies have a lot of complaints. They're not necessarily always registered with the BBB. We, we have a pretty clean bill of health with them. And so we, we have certain avenues that we can, we can take to try to show you that we're legit. But I think really just, just showing some of the work that we've done and, and sitting down with them personally would be a wonderful way to do it. Talk to your previous clients. Yep, there you go. You can talk to previous clients. We can refer you to people. And with our referral partners, you also speak directly with them. Transparency, uh, transparency as well is, is key for us. A lot of the invention promotion scams, you don't really get to find out who they're pitching your product to. You really aren't in touch with the person that might be guiding your project or supposedly submitting it to companies for you. In this case, we're actually sitting down with you. We're talking to you. We're helping you pick the right targets. We're walking you through the process. And in most cases, you're doing a lot of the work yourself too. So you're involved, we're involved. It's not just us saying, we'll call you if we get into it. You know, it's, it's a lot of back and forth. How do you look different than your mentor, Stephen T? How do we look different? Um, in terms of business model? Well, we provide, I think, a little bit more of a service than what he provides. Uh, he's very good with coaching, he's very good with consulting and things of that nature, but 
to my knowledge, he doesn't really get involved in any design, development, building any marketing materials. Um, I don't think he does one-on-one -on -one consultations with everybody. I think he has a lot of information available for people, but you don't get to speak with him in person, I don't think. He has a lot of other people that work for him that, that do those things. So him and I handle the majority of the direct consultations. What do you think about uh, the apparent trend to just give it all to Amazon and have them on the show, more or less, or at least market to them and forget about everything else? I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> advise that approach. I think Amazon's a great prong in, in a strategy. We've got a client right now that's been doing really well on Amazon. I've got another lady who I worked with a couple of years ago who has absolutely just taken off the Amazon. But I think you also want to have your e-commerce site want to think about doing SEO, you want to think about doing PPC, if that's a good fit for your product, I would look at Amazon as just one prong in your marketing strategy. You want to have it in stores too, ideally, if it's a good fit there, you know, anywhere where you can sell it. get people that can't afford e-commerce sites too, so it's a nice fall black back option to have. What do you, you, know. what do you how do you define an e-commerce site? Uh, just a website where you can sell the product through with a shopping cart, or you can go to your site and add the product to the shopping cart and buy it directly from you, or you just ship it straight to them. No, everything's a la carte. If you wanna, if you wanna a la carte, it you can. We, we only really put packages together if number one the client wants to start certain services at the same time. Then we'll we'll combine a couple of different services together. Uh, or if it makes sense to start certain things like patenting and sell sheets and marketing materials that are just coming out at the right time. If you're doing a PPA, you have a year to test the market, then we want to try to line up certain things that you have to do to maximize that year. And so on that, um, do you have the option to basically pay for the service up front, I guess, or, you know, after deals, I don't know, is it like a basically set price, or is it kind of fair? Most everything we try to just give flat fees. Okay. We, we don't really like the whole well, it might start at this price and then end up at this price. Yes. Yeah, we, we try to get flat fees. So what would be
And the main thing we like about the Stevens approach is just the low budget aspect. You know, it really promotes the don't go out there and spend 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars and then have an investment market. You don't even know if anybody's really going to buy this. He has a lot of great strategies, I think, for people that are more in that budget of. company we've met with a few times has people that have spent a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars on the product design and that's it. And they're, they're no further towards the market than they really were when they started. So that, that seems to be a good way to do it. Say you have a list of companies that are looking for new ideas, new inventions. <clears throat> That's interesting. I mean, is that a list that, if I Google, tell me companies looking for new ideas? I haven't done that. So much, but how do you know a thousand of them? How, does you, that, how do you figure that out? You can get them all over the place. I mean, you can just research really any industry and look at the top manufacturing companies based in the United States, and then you just contact them. You find out if they have a licensing program, or really if they accept outside submissions. Some do, some don't. And then if they do, then we try to open up a line of dialogue. General Electric loves new ideas, Procter & Gamble, a lot of the big firms. You can Google that. And you'll, you'll find a ton of them that are going to be right there listed on the first page. Hey, you know, we're looking for ideas. That's a big problem, trying to figure out who in an organization he would sell a, or send a sell sheet to and, and it not get lost. But That's the key. You have to follow the policy that the company sets. Don't blindly mail them things. Don't just send things to the secretary. Track down the policy and do exactly what they do. If they say mail a package of information to Google, do that. If they say email this person, like Apple have legal policies on their website that say if you send them things, they have rights to claim them. So you don't want to just blindly send anything to anybody. You have to look at the terms under which you send them. Hmm. Are you in Boulder, both of you? We are, yeah. We have a little office down in downtown Boulder on Phil Street. Well, I originally started this company eight years ago. For the first four of the five, I was on base with consulting. And then I read about the small business community in Boulder, and they said it was a really tight knit community, and there was a lot of opportunity to meet with other companies and things like that. So that was why I moved the company up here, and we, we got an office in downtown. Prior to that, eight years, places like that. And then prior to that, I worked for a consulting firm where I went to trade shows and consulted with events and things like that. And Sam's got primarily a, a design background and fine arts and design and things like that. 
What are your favorite trade shows? I like the ones, and the ones that, that I'm most familiar with are primarily the ones geared toward the invention industry with the Inventor Hall, uh, the National Hardware Show, the International Home and Houseware Show. Uh, we went to the CES show in January for the first time this year, which is one of the biggest consumer electronics trade shows of, uh, in the world, really. Uh, that one was just mind-blowing. All the future technology that's coming out, all the smart cities, and smart bathtubs, smart sinks. I mean, everything is going to be connected. A lot of self-driving cars there. And uh, the boost is just five times the size of any other trade show. That, that one is really impressive. So those are, those are some good ones. The Response Expo, the UIA usually usually has a section at the Response Expo, which is in San Diego towards the end of the year. Uh, United Inventors Association, if anybody is not familiar with that. They, they usually have sections there. Inventor sections at these shows are getting bigger by the year. When I first started going 10 years ago, there was very little for inventors. Now they have an entire hall. And at that hardware show last year, they outgrown it. People were standing four and five feet for presentations, they had educational seminars. And it's really getting big for the invention industry at the shows. Okay, so we also have the the CES show, the one in January, was in Las Vegas. Do they have them there in Denver?
tsnn.com is a good website for trade shows all over the world. You can search your industry, you can search the country, you can search the time of year, and you'll you'll be able to find. It's got a pretty pretty extensive list. Uh, any show I've ever wanted to find has been on there. Uh, pet industry has some great shows. Like Super Zoo Automobile has some great shows. Like Yeah, yeah, either we'll refer it and let the referral partner handle the financial arrangement the way they want to. Um, a lot of what, what I'm sure. service. You know, if, if we look at an idea, and we can look at our database right off the bat and tell you there's no companies that, that we've been able to find. I mean, there's a lot, there are several industries like that where there really aren't companies looking for ideas. So in that case, we just we don't have that solution. Get, con get contacted by a lot of people that have food ideas, food recipes, and barbecue stuff. There really isn't many companies. Kraft will look at ideas, General Mills will look at ideas, we've got the software in stock. So you're not going to find many people who pitch you food. The greatest invention of the kitchen is food. Yeah, yeah with that, we, we recommend people do more of starting their own business. I, I work with guy who had a salsa a few years ago, he would rent a commercial kitchen once a month and he'd get all his family in there and they make and package up 40 cases, whatever he needed for his local grocery stores and then he'd go to the grocery stores and sell them and then the next month do the same thing. Yeah, you're an idea for a, a TV show or something that we, you know, there's some things we can do legally to try to like financially support that stuff. But <coughs> once in a while, it's just a obnoxious thing that we can do. Like, you know, I think that's one of those things that people are like, well, you need to actually send us some money. Sometimes that would hurt us. Yeah, 
General Electric has a website, and they encourage everybody to submit through the website, and they have their terms, and there's a on there that you can go and read, and there's going to be a certain level of risk, no matter what you do, you're going to have to hope that, that that company is going to be fair with you and honest with you. A lot of the big brands are on their back, like their name or reputation, just like the NBA, all the others, uh, but you just never know what's going on with that. Would you want to see an NBA on anything that doesn't have a CPA or some form of patent? I would encourage, if people don't have some sort of intellectual property file, but how about you? If I came to you with an un... Oh, yeah, that's always our first step is that we have to have a or not, we always have to have a Oh, okay. Do you do much with the uh, trending sites like, I don't know, what's some jungle Yeah, on average, we take on maybe four to five new clients per month over the course of the year, 50, 60, 70 clients. And as we've grown a little bit, we've, we've grown quite a bit in the last three years, too, so that's gone up. Yeah, we, we turned down a lot of stuff just because we've seen it before. try to really work with things that we feel, in our opinion, we feel have a shot at success. Well, you'll be able to make some gut call on things, right? We Especially did. if you've seen a lot of the same old yeah. thing, like you know, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. But on a lot of stuff, it's probably, hey, got to give it a shot and see what yeah. happens. The pet rock is a yeah. pretty good example. I tell people if you if would have sent that to me, I'd probably go in the garden and thought they were crazy, but the guy made millions of dollars, so you, you can't predict them all. If you can see through that, you probably can see through anything that does. Yeah, that idea of making the maze and the
lot of times we get good feedback in the licensing meeting or two. Okay, you, know, you might get a, somebody in General Electric that might say, well, I, I like this, but can you make it this way? Or I like this aspect, but can you change this? Then we can deliver that feedback to the inventor and see if we can learn about that point. Mr. Chair, if you're We've seen licensing arrangements where the licensee takes the idea, completely changes it, don't even care about the patent, but to get it submitted, it has to be that thing. So, Bigger companies, a lot of times, will be the ones that want the patent already granted. They want to own an actual product to work with, or they want to not to continue to develop. We've seen better responses from mid-sized companies when it's in patent pending. If they can really get their design team involved, and they can continue to create.
with you and look okay, over and then give you some advice. Thank you. Just one thing, as an engineer, can you build materials and evaluate the pieces of the mm -hmm. Not necessarily the material selection, so the animal factor is going to mean all the different components to build it. Yeah, so probably an engineer would be your best bet with that. Yeah, we have, we have cards on the back table as well. If anybody wants to grab a card.
So usually in the process where Sam works with them in development initially, once everything is concrete and no more changes are going to be made, then at that point we send them to a patent agent who, who goes ahead and drafts the PPA or, or helps them with the non-provisional if they want to go that route. Um, you know, we work with so many early stage people that quite a few start with the PPA. Very rarely do they have enough information <coughs> already figured out for the utilities or for the design. Almost all of our clients are making decisions from a budget standpoint, so a lot of our advice to people is based on, okay, you've got 2,000 bucks, where's it best spent? You know, you've got 5,000 bucks, where's it best spent? You know, where, where are you going to hopefully see the total of the amount of money? So a lot of, it, a lot of it's based on that, and that's where that PPA is going to be valuable, it's going to have a lot of money. crowdfunding, we've done videos for people, we have talked to some crowdfunding experts about what it takes to run a solid campaign, we haven't felt comfortable branching in and offering that service yet just because of what is involved. Uh, we have a referral partner for that kind of stuff right now, uh, but, but from what they explained to me, yeah, it, it's difficult venture to, to get into. You have to have a lot of money just to even have some run a crowdfunding campaign for you. So it, and, and what they tell me is it's not a good fit for every product. So they, they look at ideas and try to decide whether it's a good fit for them. Kickstarter still seems to be one of the dominant platforms, yeah. And it's, uh, it's so good. GoFundMe is great, especially for personal investing if you want to send it out to friends and family and try to collect money on it. Or just you make a budget.
everybody else.